<clears throat> Here we are. <laughs> Graduating. On our way into a world that will open up more doors to us than to the millions of people who don't even have and couldn't even get a high school diploma. Woohoo! <clears throat> you get to sit there in that seat with educational privilege when so many can only dream of having that opportunity. Okay, now comes the most dreaded and avoided question in all neuropian psychotherapy. Drum roll, please. How does that make you feel? <laughs> if you're like me, guilt springs up. And along with it, shame. Just pouring down on my parade and strangling my ability to even celebrate. But I don't want to feel that. <laughs> I could keep feeding that wolf or not. I don't know if you're familiar but there, with the metaphor of the two wolves, but there is a Cherokee pro proverb that has taught me that there is a terrible fight inside of me between two wolves. And the one that I feed most will outlive the other. Just earlier you heard one wolf speak in my opening lines. He's a good friend of mine. We go way back. <clears throat> or I could feed the other wolf, the one that says, man, screw that. I'm done with that. Drama, not the guilt that's been holding me back. There's work to do in this bleeding world. And I got the tools, so watch me unfurl. And then the first wolf creeps up again, thrusting me back into paralysis. <laughs> yes, Travis, let's, let's look at our privilege. Let's look at it. Let's work with it. Let's feel the guilt, feel the shame. Yet, let's not let it become paralyzing, making us unable to actually act and use it. Paralysis by analysis, my dad would always say, how am I gonna transform the world if I'm stuck in this paralysis by analysis? <laughs> Oops, <laughs> there's my good friend again. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm gonna cut it to you straight. I'm gonna cut it to you straight. While writing this speech, that wolf was hungry for some air time. <laughs> I had to painstakingly write and rewrite this speech as my elders gently reminded me and showed me that that wolf was just creeping into every paragraph without me even noticing. <clears throat> so, to avoid that, please allow me to openly feed the other wolf as I stand in front of you. Let's see. Despite coming off as another descendant of colonizers to most Puerto Ricans back home, within me there is an identity diametrically opposite to that of a colonizer, despite the color of my skin, despite the sharpness of my nose. But wait, they don't see that. All they see is Anglo, Johnny. Your excellent education, your affluent background, for God's sakes, they speak to you four to five times in English, even when you start speaking to them in Spanish. <laughs> Actually, Yoni Fritz, you're good. They may think you're unfair and oppressing. You may think you're unfair and oppressing. Yet you actually get to decide that part of the equation. It takes endless hard work to counter the ugly side that comes with holding privilege. That's what we do at Naropa. But you're doing that work sincerely. So screw it if others don't see that. It's enough if you know what's good. Just keep doing the good work. So I've shared with you what 
my two wolves are, my privilege, my relationship to it all. But it looks so different for everyone here. My hope is that you'll notice whatever those two wolves are, those two wolves snarling at each other, fighting within you for your attention. Perhaps it's related to privilege, perhaps not. Perhaps just the educational privilege that comes by virtue of being able to sit in that seat today with your sash, or not. Whatever the case, I wanna tell you something I'm celebrating today, and that is our increased ability to choose. After we walk out those doors today, we get to choose. Just like the guards of the Attica prison riot that Howard Zinn mentions in The People's History of America, we have the choice of employing our leverage position, as Fern is reminding me, the leverage, the leverage we have. We get to choose how to employ that to fight against injustice. And of course, there's the risk of perpetrating injustice, but we get to choose. That is our privilege. And I think that's a great privilege worth celebrating. The more leverage we are, the more we get to create the changes we want to see in the world. Starting today, or maybe after your loan's grace period ends. <laughs> Whew. Wow, this other, wolf, this other wolf really took off. So positive, you know, the one that, that does this. I like this wolf. And as much as I'd like to say to you all that I will walk away with this wolf, with this wolf's belly full to the brim, leaving the other one faint, starved, and skeletal, the truth is that I'm far from that. What I can assure you of, however, is that I will continue to learn how to embrace and love the privileged parts of myself. I will keep the questions open. How do I best use my leverage to serve? How can I do so selflessly without needing to be the savior or enhance my image? And how can I keep my efforts well attuned to the actual needs of who I'm intending to serve? Damn, if I can do this, what is there not to celebrate? So if my inner dialogue resonates with you in any way, I hope that you too can go along feeding the preferred wolf inside of you heaps and heaps of the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and if you particularly resonate with the whole privilege thing, I hope you can join me in taking Rhonda's words and saying, I'm proud. So a joke I have with my friends and my cohort, I'll say, how are you doing today? <laughs> so if you're feeling proud, join me in saying, I'm proud. Gra Naropa graduates, how are you doing today? Naropa community, families, faculty, how are you doing today? Yeah. All right. <laughs> and hopefully you can also join me in saying, speaking from that second wolf in me, man, screw that. I'm done with that. Drama in the guilt that's been holding me back. There's work to do in this bleeding world. And I have the tools, so watch me unfurl. Thank you.